It is the day that all young hockey players dream of. For the first pick overall. On Friday, that dream becomes a reality for a select few at the NHL draft. Talk about trying to dictate the game. Tonight, TSN Director of Scouting, Craig Button. I think it's unprecedented. Plays the role of NHL General Manager. We know Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel are going 1-2. This young man could be unstoppable. But what about the rest of the first-rounders? Our GM projects who they are and where they're going. You'll see him someday in the National Hockey League. There is no doubt. Canada, here's a sneak peek at your next generation of stars. This is why the hype is there. It's the TSN Mock Draft, and it's next. Everybody and welcome to this TSN Mock Draft Special. I'm Darren Detish, along with our Director of Scouting, Craig Button, who for 12 years, in one capacity or another, was either the Director of Scouting or a General Manager at the NHL level. You've seen a lot of draft classes, and this is an exciting one. I'm really looking forward to it. You've got a diverse group of kids, and at the top, you have some real high-end players, Craig. Yeah, and at the top, there's no question who's going to go one and two, Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel. But then after that, the intrigue begins, and talking to a number of people around the league you can talk to one person and they have somebody at three and somebody at four and that could be very different depending on who you talk to so not only a little bit of mystery but a lot of depth no and you know what let's get to it because the Edmonton Oilers have the first overall selection and they literally won the lottery with this kid <laughs> they did win the lottery in more ways than one on that April day when they were selected to pick one that was the first part but this young man is just an unbelievable talent I mean we talk about the speed we talk about the brilliance of his play. I mean, it's all around. You think about what he's done in three years, gaining exceptional status into the Ontario Hockey League. His best is yet to come. And what that is, well, he's still got lots of tricks in his bag. But the one thing that is certain, the Edmonton Oilers are a much better franchise on and off the ice because of Connor McDavid. He was the CHL Player of the Year. This will be the ninth straight year that the CHL has produced the first overall pick. Connor McDavid at 120 points in 47 games. Here is why he is so exceptional. A scary proposition when you're at a dead stop and you see this guy coming at you full speed, forget it. Now McDavid back the other way. In comes Connor McDavid. Loose in front scores! Connor McDavid with a fantastic goal. What a gorgeous move, becoming more and more dangerous as the tournament goes along. Joining us now from Edmonton is Ryan Rashog. And Ryan, the Oilers have so much young talent, and now they get Connor McDavid. Where do you see him fitting in? Well, Darren, flat out, what the addition of Connor McDavid will do for the Oilers is give them something they desperately need, and that is some depth down the middle. Ryan Nugent Hopkins still expected to be the number one guy. He'll likely line up alongside Jordan Eberle. The two played very well together last season. Benoit Pouliot was a nice fit on the left side there. Now, Taylor Hall and Connor McDavid is a combination of speed and skill that I don't think Todd McClellan is going to be able to wait to take a look at. I would expect Hall to start on the left side of McDavid. Over on the right side, it's interesting. We've got Neil Yakupov there. I think the Oilers want to give him the benefit of the doubt of being a top six forward in this mix. Leaving down on the third line, Anton Lander in the middle, Teddy Purcell over on the right side. The left side is interesting. They don't really have a player tailor-made for that spot. Leon Dreisaitl, should he make the Oilers out of camp, could potentially start on that left wing side, though I believe there's a strong faction within Oiler management that would much rather see Dreisaitl their number one center in the American League rather than playing on the wing in the NHL. And of course, they have that ready-made fourth line, all signed, all veteran players. So Connor McDavid's addition gives the Oilers depth down the middle. They've needed that for years, Dutchie. All right, thanks very much, Ryan. I like the fact that you've already dubbed them the first overall line, the second line projected for the Edmonton Oilers, all first overall picks. Okay, the Buffalo Sabres, they did not get that first overall selection, but they will take Jack Eichel, and he also is a special player. He is, and this is no consolation prize at number two for the Buffalo Sabres. In every draft since Sidney Crosby, I believe he would have been the first overall pick. That's how good he is. He went to the World Championships and helped USA to a bronze medal. He's got a game based on speed, power, and grace and for the Buffalo Sabres the ability to build their team with a centerman this good this dynamic 
is only going to make their team that much better. So while they didn't end up winning the lottery, this is no consolation prize with Jack Eichel. No, you know what? 71 points in 41 games. He wins the Hobie Baker, has a ridiculously good freshman year, and he told the Sabres, and I love his bravado too, his self-confidence that he's the best player in the draft. Okay, now it starts to get a little bit dicey <laughs> because in the number three spot, you've got the Arizona Coyotes and Don Maloney, their general manager, said, we are open for business. I don't know what that means, but we could see deals. We could, but I can't start projecting deals, no, Dutch. No. Yeah. You know, it's hard enough for me to try to figure out who fits with the team and why. But for the Arizona Coyotes, keeping the pick, to me, leads to Dylan Strome. And the big centerman, you cannot win in this league without strength down the middle of the ice. They have Christian Dvorak, a terrific player from the London Knights. But Dylan Strome is that elite, complete, number one center. He may not be the highest score in the National Hockey League, but he's going to do everything to help a team win with the puck, without the puck offensively defensively and he's going to be able to carry a significant burden in the game call it the heavy lifting you can't win without players of this ilk all right the Toronto Maple Leafs under a new regime again Brandon Shanahan's leading the show they have the fourth overall selection where do you see them going well you know they have some options here forward or defense and I think you have to look at this pick also with the 24th pick but for that reason I am picking Mitch Marner at four from the London Knights an unbelievably creative player elusive I have never left the game saying to myself geez I wonder about his size because he controls the game he has the puck he makes plays that are going to not only create scoring chances but if you're a line mate of his you better be ready for the puck because while you may think that it's not coming to you he believes that it is coming to you and more than not he does get it to you an unbelievably gifted creative player right and really well respected when it comes to ohl coaches in the western conference too they voted him the smartest player in the uh, conference the second best when it comes to playmaking the third best when it comes to stick handling he was one of only three chl players to average more than two points per game in the 2014 2015 season all right we round out the top five. Carolina Hurricanes, who only had 30 wins last season. Where do you see them going forward? D-man. I think they're going D-man. I think they're going Noah Hannafin from Boston College. Just a superb skater in every regard. Forward, backwards, mobility, agility. And while I don't see the great offensive ability, he's a top two defenseman that can carry significant play and anchor a pair. You think of Justin Falk? I think Noah Hannafin could be a great fit for him, and he's an excellent competitor. I see him much in the same vein as a Jay Bomeister, and when you have players like that, you know you're getting a long-time NHL. All right, so here are your top five picks. you got McDavid, Eichel, Strom, Marner, and Hannafin. Hannafin was the second youngest player in NCAA Division I hockey this past season. All right, let's run through six through 10, starting with New Jersey in the six hole. Pavel Zaka, big centerman. There was talk at one time that he might have challenged for first overall. Some injuries, but he fits for the New Jersey Devils at seven. Philadelphia Flyers, Ivan Provorov. Just too good to pass up. An elite number one defenseman. They may need forwards, they can't pass on Provorov. At eight, the Columbus Blue Jackets, Zach Wierenski. A smooth skating, offensively gifted, exactly what the Columbus Blue Jackets can use. At nine, Lawson Krause to the San Jose Sharks. A big, strong, powerful winger who may not score as much, but he's going to create a lot of opportunities for the team and his line mates. And at 10, Miko Rantanen to the Colorado Avalanche. It reminds me of a player we had in Dallas, Yeri Lettinen. Makes everybody around him better. Craig, and if it works out this way, Wierenski would mean three current collegians, Eichel, Hannafin, and Wierenski chosen in the top ten for the first time ever. All right, we're just getting warmed up. We're going to take a short break. That takes care of the top ten. When we come back, we're going to go through the next batch of ten picks, including a bunch of Canadian team selections all in a row when our TSN Mock Draft Special continues. Welcome back to our mock draft special. Last year, the Florida Panthers had the first overall selection, and they ended up with an exceptional player <laughs> in Aaron Ekblad. This year, they will play host to the draft. They have the number 11th pick, Craig. Yeah, and with the 11th pick, Kyle Connor from Youngstown in the USHL. A very skilled player fits in perfectly with their young group of forwards. At 12, Dallas Stars' Timo Meyer, the Swiss Marion Hossa. At 13, to the LA Kings, Travis Konechny, the little ball of hate. I call him that because he reminds me so much of Patty Verbeek. And at 14, Matt Barzell to the Boston Bruins. A player maybe in the same mold as a David Krejci. Very good with the puck, very heady. 
All right, on we go now to a Canadian team. The Calgary Flames, they are on the clock. And this is a franchise that is perhaps ahead of schedule. You know what, bravo. They made the playoffs this year. They got a trio of real good youngsters in Sean Monaghan, uh, Johnny Hockey, and Johnny Goudreau. And uh, they've also got Sam Bennett. Where do they go here? I think that they go to the National Team Development Program, USA, and they select centerman Colin White. He's a Patrice Bergeron type of player, that good, complete, two-way centerman. And when you think about Monaghan, you think about Bennett playing in the middle of the ice, to me, Colin White just fits down the road with some development time, but a very smart player. Ended up scoring the winning goal in overtime for the USA to win gold at the U18 Championship in April. All right, we're going to stay in the province of Alberta because the Edmonton Oilers now, they had the first overall selection. They now have this selection. Pete Chiarelli's running the show there. What do you think Edmonton does? Well, they need a goaltender. And if they can't make a trade for a goaltender that can help them right now, I think that they go right to Ilya Samsonov from Russia. Everybody talks about Andre Vasilevsky. The only way to get those types of goaltenders, draft them. And this would be the first goaltender drafted in the first round since Vasilevsky and Malcolm Subban, ironically, to the Boston Bruins were selected in 2012. He's got all the abilities of top-end goaltenders. Yes, he needs some development time, but the Oilers, if you don't draft one of them, you're never going to have one of them. Now the Canadian team is up. The Winnipeg Jets, who's done, they have done a really nice job over the last little while of stockpiling players. Where do you see Winnipeg going? I, I see them going to Cape Breton and drafting another Russian, Evgeny Svechnikov, a big, powerful right winger. He can take the puck to the net with great speed and explosive stride, but he also can make plays off the wing. So he, he's unique in that respect. And when you think about the Winnipeg Jets and you think about a big, strong team with skill, Svechnikov fits perfectly. Perfectly. You know what? The Jets make it into the postseason. Perhaps the most surprising Canadian team to make it, the Ottawa Senators. They go on a ridiculous run at the end of the regular season. Um, the Sens, they are sitting at 18. Uh, what do you think Brian Murray has in mind here? Well, I love Jakob Zaboro from St. John of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. And Jakob is a competitive player. He's all in. And you think about Mark Mathot playing with Eric Carlson. I see Zaboro being able to pair with Cody Ceci. He can jump into the attack, but defensively, he's no fun to play, Ken, and he will even jump the queue a little bit and cross the edge. Right, 10 of Zaboro's 13 goals this past season were scored on the power play. Okay, let's wrap up the top 20 as we hit uh, number 19. From Sweden, Joel Eriksson Eck to the Detroit Red Wings. Doesn't it just fit? A Swedish centerman, although they've never drafted a Swedish forward in the first round. And then at 20, you look at Paul Bittner, the homegrown player from Minnesota, from the Portland Winterhawks, a big, strong winger. He can really play with good players, a fit for the Minnesota Wild. All right, we have to take a short break. Craig's got 10 more selections to make, though, when we come back, including another string of Canadian team picks. We're also going to hear from Dylan Strom. Will the Toronto team end up with his hometown team? That's just what we did growing up, is everyone cheered for the Leafs. Now being at that stage where it's actually a possibility is truly remarkable. Welcome back to our mock draft special, and let's continue. Dylan Strom is the brother of Ryan Strom, and he really made a name for himself this past season with the Erie Otters. When Connor McDavid was out of the lineup, some thought he might falter. In fact, he didn't falter at all. He flourished, and it runs in the family. Left cross, right? Yeah. And then five cheese. No. Yeah. You will never hit it. Hey, you, will, you will. It's not that hard. Dylan Strom and his brothers Ryan and Matthew started playing hockey when they were young. Very young. We had a walker. And before they could walk, they were in this walker with the hockey stick chasing after the ball. All three of them. Theirs was a hockey family. Well, we came home from, from school and, you know, I strapped on the pads and, and Matt or I would shoot on me out front. And from road hockey, we'd come in and eat and then go to practice. <laughs> and that, that, was, that was our weekends, that was our weeks, that was our, our nights. We have a big calendar and, and it, it was all color coded when they were little. And it was completely full. Even their playful hockey-themed birth announcements were prophetic. Ryan, now a New York Islander, got future NHLer. Matthew, the youngest, was hat-trick. And Dylan? 
He goes, let me just see. So he'll be 18 when he's drafted, so 2015. So the caption for Dylan was draft year 2015. has come a long way since he first laced up his skates. He was always a funny skater and he was always falling. We called him the Zamboni because he was always on the ice. And, and then I remember going to watch him maybe in, <laughs> I think it was Minor Bantam or Bantam, and I was just like, wow. Now he's a likely top five pick. And on the last day of the OHL regular season, and just three points behind Mitch Miner for the scoring title, he showed why. There's Strom all alone and he scores! It was the, the third goal, my first ever hat trick in the OHL to, to tie, and then I got an assist about two minutes later. You know, obviously it was the, the game of my life, and you know, I don't think I'll ever have one that good again. Ryan Strom may be an Islander, but his parents still have an allegiance to the hometown team. My jersey's still hanging up in the closet upstairs. And I have the, behind his. And I, and I have the leaf flag that's ready to go out. We would all dress up in our pajamas and wear leaf jerseys and watch the game on Saturday night. Living in Toronto, we, we were Leaf fans, and we, and we still are. Coincidentally, the Leafs have the fourth overall pick and are in a position to potentially select Dylan. That's just what we did growing up, is everyone cheered for the Leafs, and now being at that stage where it's actually a possibility is truly remarkable. But his parents will be thrilled no matter where he ends up. I sometimes think that, is this really happening? Pinch. Um, <laughs> You know, to have one go through it uh, is amazing, and two, wow. That's a nice story, and maybe they'll have a third, too, because Matt ended up scoring the winning goal in overtime uh, when it came to the OHL Cup in the province of Ontario. That is the minor midget championship. All right, Craig, let's keep this draft going. We are on number 21 right now. The Buffalo Sabres are back at it. Yeah. Oliver Shillington, a defenseman from Sweden. The youngest player ever to score a goal in the Swedish Hockey League. Maybe down a little bit, but his skill is undeniable. And then to the Washington Capitals, Denis Gurianov. I call him a Russian Chris Kreider. And what a fit, a Russian going to Washington. All right, what about the Vancouver Canucks as we kick off uh, four Canadian picks in a row? The Canucks, who will they select here? They've drafted a lot of forwards. I think they go defense. I think they go big Brandon Carlo from the Tri-City Americans. He's mobile. He's really an excellent defenseman who takes up a lot of space. In fact, he's got the biggest long uh, wingspan in this year's draft. Maybe not going to give you a lot of offense, but he's going to get the puck out of your zone, and he's going to allow you to create offense because you're not going to spend a lot of time in the defensive zone. Right, big guy, six foot five. They compare him to Braden Coburn, and not just because their initials are the same. All right, number 24, the Toronto Maple Leafs. You alluded to this pick off the top. Um, who do you like here? Well, there was a lot of talk at forward. Do they go forward or defensemen? And because of 24, because of the options available, they go with Gabriel Carlson at 24, the big defenseman from Sweden. And you talk about a projection dream. He is that type of player. He's approved so much, but his mobility, his understanding of the game, and much like other good defensive players that close the play off in your defensive zone and then get the play moving in the other direction, that's what Gabriel Carlson gives to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Carlson ranked number two only behind Miko Renton and on uh, Central Scouting's European list. All right. Uh, time to double dip with the Winnipeg Jets. Their second selection in the first round. Yeah, and again, you look at the Winnipeg Jets. They don't care who they get. They want skill. They want competitiveness. They want smarts. That's Nick Merkley from the Kelowna Rockets. He's got an engine that never stops. An outstanding playmaker, arguably one of the very best playmakers in this draft. And he is an, always a going concern in the game, always trying to find a way to create offense. And more times than not, he does exactly that. Just a very good offensive player that is going to fit in nicely with that very good offensive group in Winnipeg. Yeah, you know what? He had a real nice Memorial Cup run. The kid ended up with 92 assists this year. He loves to dish it in 91 games. That was regular season and playoffs combined. Okay, wrapping up uh, the Canadian selections in the first round, the Montreal Canadiens with the 26th overall pick. I'm going to Brock Besser with the Waterloo Blackhawks at the USHL. He reminds me a little bit of Kyle Ogposo for the Montreal Canadiens. Maybe he's the right wing version of Max Pacioretty. An outstanding goal scorer. He can do it multiple ways with a shot off the cycle in front of the net and he's hungry and determined to find a way to score.
And Craig, it's sometimes odd how those things kind of work out. If the Montreal Canadiens end up taking that player, it'll be the 10th time in the last 15 years that they have selected an American in the first round. Okay, let's conclude the first round. You've got Anaheim at 27. Jake DeBrus from the Swift Current Broncos, the son of former NHLer Louie, a very good scoring winger. He fits nicely with the size and the skill with the Anaheim Ducks. At number 28, Tampa Bay Lightning, Jakob Larson, a defenseman, very smooth. He needs time to develop, and the Tampa Bay Lightning can give him exactly that. 29 Philadelphia Flyers, Mackenzie Blackwood, the second goaltender selected in this year's 2015 draft. A big, raw goaltender, what the Flyers need. And at 30, the Arizona Coyotes select Thomas Shabbat. One of the defensemen that may have improved as much as any player in this year's draft, Hedy, very good with the puck, needs some physical maturity, but he fits for the Arizona Coyotes. Right, and there is not a single player, I can't stress this enough, in the first round that you have run through that you have not watched play um, yourself this season. All right, we have to take a short break. We're going to get Craig's final thoughts when we return. Welcome back to our mock draft special. Darren and Craig with you. The Chicago Blackhawks wasn't that long ago. They were hoisting out the Stanley Cup. Their third and six years. It all begins with the draft. Uh, they have drafted exceptionally well. The Edmonton owners fortuitous, and they have the first overall selection. Now, we did not see a lot of movement at last year's draft, but you think that's going to change this year? I definitely do. You have six teams with multiple picks in the first round, as well as a looming salary cap crunch. So, when you have those two situations simultaneously occur, there's lots of options and lots of opportunities. I expect this draft to be much like the 2008. Picks moving, lots of deals happening, and get ready, buckle up. That's well, what could happen. Well, I know. 2008 was crazy, though. You had 13 deals. There were 20 uh, first-round picks that were ended up moving. It was just, it was like people were throwing chips all over the place, and you foresee that again. Uh, how about in Edmonton? Pretty exciting stuff right now for the Oilers. Um, they got a franchise changer in Connor McDavid. On and off the ice, going into a new building in the future, and when you think about Connor McDavid, his, his brilliance is on the ice, and Edmonton Oilers fans, he's a treat. Oh, this was a treat. My pleasure. Thank you for doing this. Uh, nothing is finite except we expect you to be when it comes to the draft. But I love going through the mock drafts. From all of us here, thanks for watching. Make sure you stay tuned to TSN uh, Sports Center, the plays of the week, coming up next.